a city council action meeting tonight is april the 10th 2024 and it is 5 30 p.m this meeting is being held at the council chambers at 10 north main street cedar city utah we're honored once again to have pastor pete atkins of the four square church to be with us and to offer the uh, opening prayer as i've been doing in the past i'm looking for volunteers oh. to yep i was volunteered you was volunteered. I know. You, I know you was, but if you, okay, I don't. But if to. there's anyone in the audience who would like to lead us in the pledge of allegiance, if you would raise your hand and come forward and state your name for the record and lead us, that would be wonderful. And if not, yes, right. Serena. Right Serena will Off do it. The hook. Serena will, and that's great. Thank you very much. So that will be after Pastor Pete, and then we'll go that far. Thank you. Once again, honored to be invited. But let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so, so, so grateful uh, for all that you do for us. We recognize that uh, none of us are here by chance, but by your divine appointment. Uh, Lord, your word tells us that leaders are set in place by your hand, Lord. And as we're, we're here today gathered to take care of some business, we recognize that each person that, that, that's here is appointed by you. And ask, Father, that you would give us wisdom and grace, uh, a, a sense and a spirit of camaraderie. Lord, we recognize that Cedar City is a unique town, um, and the things that we get to do here and the things that we get to be a part of and the things that we get to talk about and process through, uh, so many people don't have uh, th the benefit of being able to do it in the, in the climate and the culture that we do, and so we're grateful for that. Pray that your spirit would reside in this, in the, in this room um, and that there would be a, a, a cohesive sense of just human beings working together um, for a cause and to do good. Thank you for all the good that happens um, in this city. Uh, thank you that we're uh, able to be a part of your divine plan. Uh, bless us tonight as we work together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Would you like to come up here to the, and state your name for the record? Um, this is the Youth Council, Serena. Um, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Serena. And we have a, an agenda before us. Mayor, that I would move that we approve the agenda order for this action meeting April 10th. Second. I have a, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Um, on the the uh, first matter on that I have tonight, first of all, is the budget. And I have a different date than some have. I have the 30th and the 1st. Some have the 29th and the 30th. Which state are we doing that on? <laughs> oh. I'll do either one. Uh, is this of April? Hold on, let April, me see what April you told 29 me. and 30, or April 30th and the 1st? I had Tuesday, Wednesday, but I so did I. do Monday. Yeah, do you want to go Monday, Tuesday, and then have counts on Wednesday, or would you rather just have Tuesday and all day Wednesday? Let's just take Wednesday off. I'd rather uh. do Tuesday and all day Wednesday than have to do Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. And that is 29th? Oh. No, that's, oh, that's 30, 30 May 1. 30th April and okay. the 1st. May, May Day. What, what time will we start? Nine. You'll be gone the first? Yeah, I will get Oh, oh. Natasha day. has a new job. <laughs> <laughs> Which Natasha? Not Natasha, no. Natasha. Oh. Natasha. Natasha and Natasha. Natasha. It's all the same to me. Potatoes, potatoes. So it is the 30th, 30th and May 1st. and the 1st. That's what I have. Anyway, so I'm good. What time would you like to start, Mayor? Um, a.m. I think it was a nine. Six, wasn't it? Yeah, usually we start at nine. Nine is nine great. and be done by like four. That's a long day. Mm -hmm. Great, super. I'm like very happy to announce. Probably have heard that the deeds have been signed, and and I think recorded. We hope yeah. for the fiddler's transfer, fiddler's part transfer with the Sitla. <laughs> Everybody's so excited. Uh, the word went out and they've already called for uh, blue stakes. <laughs> They're surveying it tomorrow. 
Uh, Eric says he'll have the gadget, start moving gadgets out to be scraping the sagebrush away on Monday. Paul's checking on the prairie dog. Yeah, we need to do that before we start scraping the sagebrush. And I said, Jonathan, I told him to be sure to file the grubbing permit because I don't want to pay that <laughs> fine um, that you assess. To ourselves. <laughs> We've got to keep the rules. Just not, yeah, I know, congratulations. That's, that's, that's great. It's been a long time. It's been a long, in. long time. I, you know, I really, I, I've been the pusher, but Mr. Bentman has just, he's just a bird dog on this stuff, and he just keeps at it. And uh, with been endless amounts of back and forth that just, are very frustrating. Also, I took some time the other day and came in and read these these pictures on the wall. Uh, they're going down here in two weeks or uh, very soon, and it's fascinating. Now, we lived in Sunderland out by Sugarville in Delta, and the Topaz is out in that, that neighborhood, and we've been several times to the Topaz, and Wendy's grandpa has some. But this is, this is fascinating, and is. this is history. I love history. And you know we all we all have kind of a tear in our eye for this this thing that went on, and uh, uh, but it's you know the the stories and the resilience of of the Japanese Americans that were put in internment camps here um, is pretty amazing, and I enjoyed reading them. But we will have a new display coming in, and I think we're going to have some kind of an unveiling. Da 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 da. I, I got a deal f email. So we'll do that. Great. Uh, and we'll look forward to that. And it's something that's coming from the state of Utah, and I can't remember what, but it's a, it's a, dis a traveling <coughs> display that's going to be done here. And it'll hmm. probably be very interesting. The uh, applications for the RAP tax is now open. And uh, so those who may like to participate in that process very interesting what's the uh, deadline on the applications uh, June 1st I don't know it's on the uh, website does anybody know it's usually around the first of June I didn't know if yeah. that was Facebook will tell us in two seconds it's, it's they're on the website and the okay. application and so forth is on the website that's all I know that's fine uh, that's all I have council do you have matters that you I just have like a, I have make? a couple I'd like to report on um, you know, we were, I think two weeks ago, we had the folks from the Parkinson's Association here and the mayor read a proclamation for the month of um, April as National Parkinson's Month. And I attended the event on April the 9th. Uh, I know Dan Dale quite well, and he's really been a leader. And um, they had a, Tyler Brinkerhoff came and spoke. They had a whole discussion about prevention and falling, and it was, startling to me although i knew it but startling to me the number of people in the room that attended and who had parkinson's disease or their partner did and uh it was just such a heartfelt wonderful thing it was held at the senior citizen center this last uh, the 9th of april and there was probably a hundred people there and they had a lot of professionals there doing different exercises with them after the discussions and it was just really a wonderful uplifting sort of hour and a half it was very rewarding and then today, just as a follow-up, because it came to our council, the mayor was there, and we had the opportunity to there be for the unveiling of the Happy Factory sign. If you remember our new sign, that today they unveiled it, and it was a lot of fun, and there was a lot of folks street. there. There was a lot for of folks a sign, there. For a street yeah. sign. That Donna Cooley can get crowds out, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all I had to say. Thank right. you very much. Reports. Okay. Uh, I just, Mayor, I would like to... <coughs> just mention one item. Um, over this last week, I've had a few people contact me, and we have talked about, and, and we're getting to that time of year where it's a budget time of year, and, and the mayor is, uh, and the mayor and the staff, sorry, not just the mayor, are really working hard at getting their budget out for the year, and the council will examine that and see what we can and can't do. But there's one, been one thing that has come to my attention by a few different people, and that is uh, there was talk, and I guess this started long before I, sometimes I'm behind the times, that the council, the mayor, 
uh, probably not the city staff had intentions or was looking at cutting 20% of the city staff. Yeah, I heard the same thing. So did I. And I would like to maybe stop. I wish there was a lot more people here. If it was a dog issue or the chicken <laughs> issue, we'd have a ton. Of <coughs> but we don't. <laughs> but um, in the time that I have been on here, which has been two years and a few months, as we have gone through the budget season and we have talked and I visited with the mayor on this, on this item frequently, in fact, that never once have I, well, have we talked about cutting the budget or cutting the staff, sorry. Um, and that, in fact, I know as this budget year comes up and last year we increased the number of individuals who were employed by the city and I believe this year we'll do the same. As we talk about, um, <coughs> you know, uh, Mr. Stathis is going to leave the city and moving on, and, and he'll leave a pretty big hole. And as I have talked with a few of the council members and with the mayor, I think there needs to be two people. Uh, the mayor talked to me about that, and he has a little different plan, that it will probably involve more than two people. I know that Mr. Stathis has talked to him frequently and how he feels that it would be more efficiently time-wise and, and and hopefully better run and so I think the mayor is considering that and as I looked at that there's quite a few individuals who will be added if possible if we can find them to the engineering department uh, constantly we have people come and go and never once have I er heard that say well since they're gone let's just leave that position open because we do not need them uh, year in and year out uh, I would say every one of these council members, and it'll happen here soon, that we get somebody who calls and says, hey, we got weeds over here, or we have a problem here. And very rarely have I known that the city staff is not working to get that taken care of. And oftentimes it's, well, we're struggling with the amount of people that we have. We'll get there, and they do get there. And they do the best that they can, and it's hard to keep people within the city. Uh, oftentimes, private entities can lure them away, and we, we've seen that over the last year in, within the city staff. It will continue to happen. Um, I know that the mayor continually talks, how am I going to increase pay for these people? I think he's working on it. I know this, the people who sit up here take that into high consideration. But the deal of cutting 20% of the staff of the city, there is no way with 20% less people that the city could function. Uh, your toilet would clog, you would have no water, your streets would have potholes, and your parks would be ugly and they would have an extreme amount of weeds. Mm -hmm. So I, that's just mayor. We I just haven't even had, I don't, in the conversation never been had between us. Not Seems between to be had on the street, but not with us. Not with us, mm -hmm. not with the people Anybody. who are in charge of that. So. <laughs> Thank you. If I may uh, just add to that a little bit, you know, as we've been doing these, um, uh, what are they called? Uh, you know, these closed sessions for the uh, to discuss the character, professional competence, or physical or mental health of an individual. Um, you know, we're we're using this to discuss with our department heads the um, the needs of their department on a one on one and case by case basis, so that we can ensure that they have the tools they need to manage their departments. Um, we are not having these to encourage uh, department heads to reduce staff or to fire people. That is, that is not the purpose. We, we just want to make sure that we understand the problems uh, that they're dealing with in a uh, safe setting where we're not uh, discussing uh, individuals in public um, those rules are quite strict as far as what we can and can't discuss in closed session um, and we keep it to those items and uh, and and we, we have that in that environment so that we can ensure that our uh, staff feel empowered to manage <laughs> their departments as they need to uh, so yeah in, in no way is there uh, any appetite to um, cut staff um, across the board or even within departments um, you know if now granted if there's a 
problem with an individual, we want to make sure that uh, that a department head feels like they have the tools to, to deal with that. But again, um, there are a lot of ways to deal with problems other than simply termination. You don't you don't just cast your best assets that you've trained aside. That's that's not how you run a business, and that's not how you run a um, a city. So anyway, I uh, thank you I very just much. That. We do love and appreciate our city employees. There's 180 of them. 189 of them. 100 and yeah, full-time full -time employees and a couple of hundred part-time, and, and we appreciate them, and there's lots to be done, and they, we, we think they're wonderful. Mayor? Uh, yes. I just had a couple of things real quick, mm -hmm. if I could. Please. Uh, to answer your question, Councilman Phillips, Monday, May 20th at 5 p.m. is when RAP tax. Monday, May 20th is the deadline. Thank you. According to our city website. Thank uh, you. A couple of things. One, I wanted to thank the police chief and also our streets department. You remember in last week's meeting we had a discussion about looking at putting up a speed limit sign or a traffic interactive sign on 1600 north no, i went not. home on thursday at about 2 p.m and the sign was already up <laughs> so it took a little under 24 hours for that to happen so our uh chief passed it on to our roads crew and eric and his guys they were right on it like blue bonnet so it was amazing how fast that happened <laughs> um one thing um Yesterday, I don't know if any of you also saw this. We've talked a little bit about this. That's why I'm bringing it up. But uh, and maybe Chief, I don't know if he has any information on this. But we talk about our eagles out by the soccer field. Yesterday, one of them was found dead, and at DWR, it was shot. So D according to DWR report, oh. so they are working on. That's the, yeah, it was on Facebook. DWR came out with the official report, and they're investigating it. And is that different than the one that had to be euthanized? Yeah. Well, yes. no, it, it's well. It had no. to be euthanized because the of the. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. Uh, so it's because the same. Of its, wounds. It's, it's not two separate. No, okay. because of its wounds, it. they and they asked, yeah, and it, they say it was found approximately forty-five hundred west. So I'm like, well, that's right where that subdivision. So, yeah. was, so I'm assuming so it's. I was out there two days ago, yeah. and uh, I assume the mail was flying around. Although they made for life, but there was one on the nest. I got my binoculars out, and there's one, I think, on the eggs, and so. And, uh, and and then there was another one scoping out a fish that we haven't yet provided. <laughs> so I was saddened to hear that. And so, But then the other thing I wanted to bring up, and I've talked to um, uh, Councilman Melly and I both participate in Iron Leaders through SUU. It's a year-long program. Um, and the final day for that, we always meet on the second Wednesday of every month. And normally we're done by 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But on Wednesday, May 8th, they um, are changing things up, and there's a graduation ceremony that evening. Both of our spouses and us have both been invited to attend. But also, I know Councilman Phillips is going to be gone that day. And so I would like to look at, I mean, if possible, what it would take to move that meeting to possibly the Thursday, Wednesday, the night. If we can, I don't know what it takes to move a city council meeting, but you have three council people that have conflicts that evening so i don't know what you're that talking takes. the 8th of may yeah. mr phillips will you be in town for that next night no i will not i'm not oh, back okay. until the 12th but you and i would both be here so we would be have four of us yeah it's just i can just miss it and then and i i mean we could do that too <laughs> i just graduate, feel bad no uh, it's i've graduated enough times already i'm <laughs> i'm i uh, um, That's just why I wanted to have the discussion. I mean, yeah, if, have it are you week. out that whole week, Mr. Phillips? I am. Okay. Unfortunately, but I am. If we cancel it, I can be gone somewhere. <laughs> well, we can't cancel it. We'd have to No, there's too much business. It. We just have to reschedule. I'm just looking at my schedule. Um, it might be easier if is I that just a, come. That is that a work meeting or is that an action meeting? That would be an That's action, an action, action meeting. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was just I was looking at my schedule for later that week. I It might be... It'll probably be easier if I just miss out on that. So oh, I hate. I don't. That wasn't my intent. I, I know. Well, and but that's that's fine because <laughs> um, it's okay, Carter. As long as I mean, because people have to get their engineers here and everything else. So yeah, they okay. do. Um, okay. They, I just I've, knew we had a conflict. So I just well, and, and no, my, I appreciate you bringing this up so we can. Have and that discussion. evening, my wife wasn't going to be able to be a plus one anyway because okay. um, she has a uh, soccer game with one of the kids. And it's so. my birthday that day, and I'd rather. Yeah. You don't want to spend your birthday here? Well, I'd love to, but I could also spend it there with my wife at dinner. She can come and sit here. <laughs> 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 You're getting a free she dinner. can bring the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<coughs> okay, well, strike that then, and I guess we got it figured out. Okay, yeah, what we'll just do, we do it. Do? Uh, I guess it's going to remain, but you'll only have three councilmen that evening. So none of us can get sick. So none of you can get sick. Oh, okay. Well, by all means, if there was an emergency, I could be here, of course. Like right. If there's something where they, one of them ultimately could not be here, of course okay. I would need to. Mm -hmm. so one of the same. City business has to move on. That's it. Thank you, Mayor. Under staff comments, I, I uh, Jonathan, do you want to report on this? I did stick in front of you. I, yes, you did. This uh, engineer A2ES or whatever their name is, A2S. That is quite the chart. Is um, so if sent, and they said, <laughs> well, if you want to look at one of these gadgets you want to buy for the treatment plant, you might go to Central Valley Water Reclamation. Something, 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 something. Water reclamation facility, which is out by the Coral Mountains, Car the, in Salt Lake, South Salt Lake Valley, and they have it. So I went to their website. I brought up this schematic. I talked to Eric. If you look at the far right, number 17 on the little map, the little gadget that's called reuse filtration is the gadget that we're talking about. And this is what the dialogue said. I included it in there. Fluent from the treatment plan can be reused for irrigation of grass and landscape to supplement existing water supplies if it receives additional treatment. Sand filters or membrane microfiltration plus added disinfection are common methods used to pre prepare the water for recycling. Once treated using these methods and tested to meet the Utah Division of Water Quality, Standards, the water is designated type one reuse water. The Central Valley Water Reclamation Facility produces approximately 700 gallons per minute. Type one reuse water during the summer months. This water is used to fill decorative ponds, water in the Central Valley Golf Course. They built the golf course around the wastewater facility, incidentally. Nice place to get water. And golf in the round driving range. Some of the disinfectant and fluent water is also reused within this same thing for plant water needs. Plant water is strained through automatic bash washing strainers and the irrigation water is filtered through an upflow or sand filter. The process consists of chlorine, uh, continuous backwashing, deep sand filters, and ultraviolet light disinfection. So that's what they do. Uh, it was on their website. I thought that was interesting. We do have a report from Dam that I think Jonathan wants to report on. Yeah, please, Jonathan. Yeah, we did receive a report. Um, I'll, we'll be sending that out to the city council so you can review that. It is just uh, we're they're at about a sixty percent level at this point in putting together the report. Um, <coughs> we're hoping to have a full report by next Wednesday, and they're they're planning to be here at the meeting next Wednesday. But we wanted to give you an update on on kind of where we're at in the process and going through that study. Um, so we're, we're looking at uh, treating the effluent to type one um, at 4.8 million gallons per day. Currently, the treatment plant treats about three. We're at about what 3.1 uh, million gallons per day. Uh, the plant's designed to handle a capacity of 4.8, and so the this treatment process would be designed to handle the 4.8 million gallons per day. So type one currently the effluent coming out of the plant is a type two. Uh, type 1 allows for more uses, um, irrigation, um, irrigation of food crops, um, pasture irrigation for milking animals. So that it just allows for more uses. One of the things we're looking at doing is putting this into the city's secondary irrigation system that would be used to water the ball uh, parks and, and schools and, and, uh, and other public areas. Um, one thing with type one, there are certain parameters that need to be met in terms of the water quality that needs to be achieved in order to call it as a type one. Uh, our treatment plant and also and the operators do such a great job. A lot of the parameters are already being met, um, which is good. But there's there's also other parameters that still need to be improved in order to to bring it to type one, and those are listed there. Um, so AE2S has been looking at several options uh, for treating the, the effluent to type one. Um, 
kind of the ones that have risen to the top are what we call the cloth disc filters. And there's a few, there's a few pictures there of what those look like. Um, it's, it's fairly new technology, and this is kind of the uh, state-of-the-art technology. The, old, the older methods used to use sand filters. That's what we saw in, in St. George. Um, but this is more of a newer technology, and it, it's quite a bit cheaper than the, than the sand filters as well. Jonathan, um, one thing before we get too far into this, you know, we, we were just talking about how we already meet the requirements on a number of metrics, but not some others. Right. Is that being considered it as this, you say that, you know, these media filters have been, have kind of risen to the top. Yeah. Um, is, is that being considered as far as, you know, we're not worried about TSS, we're not worried about BOD, you know, some of that stuff. And so this makes more sense for a system that looks like ours, or is this just kind of an across the board? Like, well, if you're looking at it, no matter what, this is kind of what we're looking at. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, they're looking at they're looking at the quality of the effluent coming out of our plant specifically, and how specifically yes. what is best to get us to where we need to be. Yes. Okay. Yes. So. These two are the cloth disc filters. There's one that's called pile cloth. That uses fabric strips uh, in a circular pattern there. And then the other one is sheer cloth, which actually uses stainless steel on, those, on that circular pattern. Um, both of those are similar. Uh, pile cloth is actually used more here in Utah. There's, they've listed, I think, four or five in their report that are actually in service in Utah. So it might be easier to get source materials. And yeah. The sheer cloth, they don't know of any that are actually in use in Utah. They're, they are used in some other states, but the pile cloth seems to be more, um, I don't know, it's just in use more here in Utah. Um, and the other thing is with the, with the cloth disc, it's the capital cost is quite a bit less than some of the other alternatives. We're looking at about... 3.5 to 5 million dollars for this uh, for this type of filtration system. It depends on the what we call the redundancy of the system. If we design it just to do the 4.8 million, we're looking at about 3.5. Or excuse me, yeah. If we use if we design it to do the 4.8 million gallons per day, we're looking at about 3.5 million. If we add some redundancy to increase the capacity, meaning if we have to take one section offline, we can still run it through uh, another another train. Um, that would kick it up to more in the $5 million range, depending on, on the redundancy there. Um, some of the other options that they've looked at, I can't address that right there. Yeah. You know, there, we talk about redundancy, but you know, what, what actually would be the worst? You would turn the water out and water the grass while you perform the process on it we would not have a second filter to run it through if we are third or fourth or whatever right but we always have the do what we've been doing capability if we needed to yeah what we're doing now yeah, I do wonder what, well, what, uh, water the grass for a day or two <clears throat> the challenge though would be if if um you know let's say we start to phase out the cemetery well and you know some of these other uses and then having to get those back up and running and online if something goes down for one and, and two is the discharge permit right right now we can discharge on the land because we have a permit for that if we don't you know it, we're kind of stuck if, if if our permit doesn't include that and maybe that's something you know speaking of redundancy going forward that we still maintain the ability to discharge effluent at the land application site even if we get this on board just sure. in case something goes and wrong and the hope is to to not necessarily just for me is not just necessarily to pump out of this thing straight to our application but to to move it to the pond facilities at lake on the hill and and out west and other places that that we could then store and if we were down for a day or two we'd just pump from the pond Jonathan, one quick question that I have. If we spent more of the $5 million, in addition to redundancy, does it also allow us volume above the 4.8? So, I mean, it would take us into the future further, or is it just a pure redundancy? Like, could you use both at once? And really, that's the only way to get the water coming in. Um, 
I don't know for sure, but I assume you could use yeah, the additional trains. I, I don't know why you couldn't. Um, so it might help it with future expansion as well. Because that's what I'm talking about. I mean, they're I can't imagine be, these things are going to get cheaper. And they're going to be here next oh. week. And they'll we be. can ask that question. Well, and maybe we look at how to phase it, too, kind of like with the um, – the screw press, right, where we've we've got all the stuff that's hard to change later put in, and we just buy a new gadget later if we need to. Yeah. 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 So you have the footprint there, and everything stubbed in, and you can just add it add it later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they also looked at, at sand filters. Um, they looked at a continuous backwash sand filter which I, I, I'm not real familiar with, but um, but the capital cost on that one is $10 million, and so it's quite a bit more. Um, they also looked at deep bed and traveling bridge sand filters, and I believe the one in St. George was the traveling bridge. Um, but what they're saying is that's a little bit of an outdated technology, and it, it's, it's a lot more expensive as well as cover it. It has to cover a lot larger area. Um, than the cloth disc filters. Um, so they didn't really look too in-depth at those, but but anyway, they did look at the sand filter to see what that would, you know, how it compared to the cloth disc filters. Jonathan, I uh, when I read through this material, I looked, noticed the same thing on the sand filters, that it was some outdated technology. And so my question is, are, is the, the cloth piles, are those things... Do we think that they're going to be current for a period of time, or are they going to be outdated in two years or something? Well, I mean, there's always a chance there's going to be new technology. I mean, yeah. there's always new research and, and new things that could come online. But as of right now, that appears to be the best available technology okay. at this point. The, the way I understand it is one of the problems with the sand is because it's a – it's kind of self abrasive so it's it's the, it's all calibrated to a certain spec mm -hmm. to only allow a certain size particle through yeah. but over time as those sand particles keep hitting each other they change their size and and that's why the cloth is more favorable so if the cloth technology were to change in the future it would likely be the type of cloth, cloth or not material. necessarily yeah. the apparatus or the concept yeah. st george in that third bay is going to a cloth that was there. Do you remember when we were down there? Well, and the other problem with the sand they had down in St. George is they have no way to take it out. You know, yeah. they have to remove the right. windows and take it out and then put the windows back in the building. Yeah. And I, I thought this was interesting to see the length of time between right. filter changes. Yeah. Many, many, many years. Uh, Mr. Bonzel, would you like to say something? <laughs> <laughs> So the, la the last one that they looked at is called ultrafiltration membrane. Um, this is the highest cost at 14 million, but it's it's the best in terms of uh, cleaning up the water, and it also provides a benefit. Um, it could provide a benefit in the future to allow for an easier transition to potable reuse. Um, again, it's, it's it's such a high cost; it's probably not feasible right now, but. It's just something that they're they're looking at as a possible as a possible option. And one of the things I uh, just I get more and more nervous about potable reuse as well, just because of the you know they're they're talking at the federal level. It maybe even passed something. I I don't follow the news very well about you know more legislation on these forever chemicals and yeah. testing, and, and it's like well, okay, so the so the EPA that's supposed to protect the environment wants us all to be taxed and spent into oblivion and, and lower our standard of living and increase our carbon footprint, right? So something like this, I, I would be nervous that it wouldn't meet those specs, at least the specs that the lobbies want us to meet in the future, right? So um, <clears throat> anyway, I would, a year or two ago, I might have been more open to spending a little more on something that could transition to that, but now I'm, it's, it's clear that the EPA doesn't care about the human carbon as much so i'm i'm okay not spending that money <laughs> this will be an interesting discussion next week when <laughs> a2 ae2s comes to town may oh I go ahead yes you may i'm jet 
So about three months ago, I'm a little bit of a geek, and I was reading in one of my, uh, I think it was the Wall Street Journal, that there are billions with an S being spent right now on new technology for sewer reclamation. I think that was the term they used from brown to clear. And they said billions with an S being spilt, spent right now. And most of that money is coming from the Middle East where they're dumping that money in due to the fact of water problems and, and their growth in that area. So to, to Mr. Phillips uh, <coughs> ask, is this new technology or is this gonna last five years or two years? I, I can't remember exactly your number. Um, I think you're gonna, and I'm not saying don't do this. I'm saying we're gonna see rapid uh, change. There's a lot of money to be made in this industry right now, tremendous amounts, because we can live with a, a with a lot of without a lot of things, but water just isn't going to be one of those that we can live with. So, I think you're going to see some tremendous changes in the next few years on this particular matter. Thank you. I, thank you. And I've been reading a book for a while. I read a few paragraphs and then I think about it for all night long about what Israel has done for their water in that desert and the comparables to Utah and, the, and Israel is quite, are quite striking when you consider our arid ma uh, area with mountains and drilling and doing those things, but also a salt sea that we have in Utah and all of the things that they have done to, to grow the, the state of Israel to the extent that it is. And it's fascinating that water drives the world, drives everything. and then when it's the most difficult to, to deal with, we come up with the best solutions because that's, that's what happens when you put the pressure on people. They get pretty in innovative. And that's, it's been fascinating to read. I forget the name of it, something to water, I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Well, there's more, more there, Jonathan. Did you want to talk about yeah, this just, analysis? Thank you. Yeah, just a couple more things. Uh, Anyway, this just shows the, the analysis that they did. The pile cloth just filled the rose to the top as far, as far as the ranking. They looked at several different, different things, including the capital costs, the maintenance, and, and other, other things. So, um, And then this is, these are some pictures from that South Valley, or excuse me, Central Valley water rec reclamation facility. This shows the, the cloth disc filter and what it looks like. Jonathan, the did building. their price estimate include the building that houses this, or is that just the actual apparatus? I believe that includes the building as well. Oh, yeah. Right. And then the other question I had is, where, because um, we, you know, agreed to AE2S, like the 20, 20 something thousand or whatever was the bid. I mean, how much of this is that? Is like, or is this still in? Because didn't we hire him for the first three steps? I'm assuming yeah. this is just the beginning of step one, or is this like? This is step one. What they're going to come present is step one. This is ta task one, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, okay. this is so task one. After they come and present and they give us the full report, task one is done. That's what we paid for, essentially, was what we just saw, but more. Yeah, and then we need to choose a, an option, and then they start working with the state to get these things approved. So. And pick the three. Mm -hmm. So that's what our, okay. Well, that makes me a little uh, more comfortable, too, where there are other systems using this technology because that's yeah. that's always the concern right sure. it's, it's uh, if you're the first in your state and you get to be the one trying to make your case and that's never fun yeah. so so this shows that the state's comfortable with this it's something that's you know that can that can be approved by by the division of water quality the this is cloth disc the cloth, yeah the cloth pile cloth the first one. Just a, just a few other things that we're considering currently. Plan expansion. We want to make sure that it's this fits in with the future plan expansion. Um, we also want to make sure that this can be uh, this water could be uh, put into the secondary system for use of the lake at the hills. Um, they're looking at some additional phosphorus removal, which would not be part of the filtration process, but it would be an additional chemical treatment that would need to be included um, as part of the treatment process. Uh, we talked about redundancy. We're gonna have to decide on that. Um, we are gonna have this 
uh, sent to Stantec for peer review. So I've talked to Clint Rogers with Stantec, so that well, this will be sent to him tomorrow to look at and just make sure that he doesn't or see what comments he has. Um, we've Mayor Green has discussed traveling to visit one of the facilities. Um, I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. I suggested Friday at noon. Haven't heard back on that, but as soon as possible the next, so that we don't delay that. But I, I, I like to see stuff. And then. A2S will be here next week to present to the city council. Um, one question, uh, if you could go back one slide or two now. Uh, so with our phosphorus removal, sorry, forward one more. There we go. If we add a phosphorus, you know, a heightened phosphorus removal to our effluent, um, is this one of those where there's kind of a trade-off? Like if, if we're uh, adding more chemical to get rid of more phosphorus are we going to have higher tss or high nitrates or anything like that you know i, I know we kind of have that with certain types of nitrogen right if the bubblers are higher then we might have more turbidity or something like that what's what what are the ramifications to phosphorus removal is it just simply a matter of more chemical i kind of asked eric that same question earlier and as far as the chemistry goes, we don't know for sure. What we do know is if we do a chemical process to, to attach to the phosphorus, thereby making it a solid, our, our biosolids are going to go up. Go up, and our cost to dispose of them is going to go up. Right. So that, despite whatever filtration system we may or may not choose, phosphorus might be something that the feds force us to deal with anyway mm -hmm. so it, it's probably not a bad idea to start getting educated on on some of these things okay and so it, and with phosphorus how do we know how far over the parameters we are is it something where we're double or triple or are we just like 20 percent over the threshold or i don't know exactly how far we are over um i know we have had issues at the lake at the hills with with algae and things like that, which is which would get worse if we had more phosphorus. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we'd have to be careful there. Yes. Um, yeah. Good thing we have a second screw press, right? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll have one. Yeah. No, but it, takes so out, it helps get rid of the biosolids. Huh? Squeezes the water out of the biosolids. Okay. okay. Very interesting, and thank you very much. Uh, other staff comments, please. So if any of you have been watching the uh, information on Panguitch Lake yeah. and the possible yeah. dam break, yeah. we've been contacted. Uh, we're prepared to send over uh, a vac truck and a crew to help the, if Panguitch floods to help them clean out their systems. And uh, the fire department's prepared to send over a uh, swift water rescue team as well as a, um, oh, gee whiz. It's a trailer we bought to... It's got all sorts of flooding mitigation gear in it so we can pump basements out and help people get back to normal no, I, if we I, have to. I appreciate that. We're, um, that's that's something we need to do if our neighbors are in trouble, and yeah. I, would, I would assume we would get the same help if we needed it. Yeah. Sure. It's, it's a mixed thing. We, we love the high waters. We love all the water that's sitting there, but now it can cause real damage. I was up there Monday, and that lake is full, and it's run Clear Creek is yep. running full, and there's lots of snow on the mountain, and it's been full all winter, and the freezing of that lake is probably being so high, probably hasn't helped the dam. Yep. But Panguitch Lake is a lake, and a reservoir second, because it, they rate to get more in the lake, they build a dam, so it won't doesn't go to zero. It's ironic. Right. It's ironic that at least what I've read, the the earthen dam that was built in the 20s is still sitting solid, but it's the cap that they put on years later that is where we're having the issues. Yeah, correct. Very interesting. Other staff comments? Thank you. I will uh, public comments tonight. This is a work meeting, so we're going to, I mean, excuse me, an action meeting, so we will be deliberating on the items 
but now's the time that you could speak on any item, but we, we restrict that to those people making the application. I guess we're done there. Well, they left. Item beginning with public consent agenda. I'll read that. Item number one, approval of minutes dated March 20th and 27th, 2024. Item number two, ratify the bills dated March 28th, 2024. Item number three, approve single event alcohol permits for the beer garden at the Spring Fiesta on May 3rd and a beer garden at the July Jamboree on July 13th. Item number four, approval of the disposal of city property near the golf course in 900 North. Item number five, approve a crosswalk across 900 North. Item number six, approve a memorandum of understanding with Iron County for the Diamond Z edition. Item number seven, approve a water rights donation agreement with Sun Builders. And number eight, approve a contract for performance audio. Before we have a motion, I have a question on one of the items actually. Um, and I should have asked this earlier and I apologize, but can we just get some clarification? It looks like as I'm looking at the bills, so LeBaron's test well ended up costing us double the 20,000 we thought we were gonna spend. There was a bill for 17,300 and then another bill for 25,300. So a total of 42,600 for testing LeBaron's well, is that, are we done? Is that it? <laughs> yeah, we're done. It, we ended up having to go an extra week because okay. it, it, it just wasn't cleaning up very fast. I know that, very I fast. just wasn't sure it cost us that much more, but. But yeah. we were concerned that we needed to clean it up to make sure we were gonna get the quality that we needed to get. I agree, but it was okay. a It was a little. But there's no more outstanding bills there. We're paid no, up, that's, we're done. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. And then I have one a question as well. I just want, this is for clarity. That when we're approving a crosswalk at 900 North, uh, that is between the 18th hole and it over to the clubhouse. It is, I don't want think people thinking we're putting a crosswalk at 900 North and Main. Yeah, so it'll go from the 18th hole over to the parking lot. Right. And then they can get on the sidewalk there and drive up yep. to the clubhouse. Yeah. Uh, any more discussion in here? No, I just had that one. I would move that we approve the uh, consent agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Item number nine. Consider deferral agreement for frontage improvements in pasture lane subdivision phase one. Dallas Buckner, Go Civil. Um, this is the deferral agreement, and then we have the final plat up next. Um, there was some discussion last week with council as far as putting a timeline into that deferral agreement. Um, I made some edits, Randall made better suggestions, but CW Group has, a, has agreed to um, the changes that Randall had made um, on a red line, so I'm assuming that was put in front of council, but it basically gave a option A or B, and if mm -hmm. um, and option B was the five years from the effective date of this agreement. Perfect. Yep. That's exactly what we were looking for. Okay. I do want to just make a comment in general about deferral agreements. I think they make sense where you have to put infrastructure in, if you had to put infrastructure in to start your project and then tear it out and then patchwork and then put it back in, it makes sense to do those. But just to get out of doing it, it I don't agree. So I just want to make that as a, a general comment that, that they make sense where we're saving people dollars and putting in and then patchworking to put it back in. So just as a, as a general comment. I would agree with you. And then I, I'm going to recuse myself from his votes. So because I'm the neighbor, so I, I may have a financial impact there. Okay. I would move <coughs> that we approve the deferral agreement for frontage improvements in the pasture lane subdivision phase one. Second. I have a motion and second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Item number 10, consider final plat for the pasture lane subdivision phase one. Oh, so this is the final plat. I'm working through the letter of final requirements with Randall. Um, we had taken care of everything on the developer, Kimball Holtz property, um, and we added in the road dedication. Um, I wasn't forward thinking enough to think we needed the title and everything for, um, and the taxes for the CW portion that's being dedicated for the roadway. So those are two outstanding items. I was spoke with CW before I walked into the meeting this evening. Um, they're pretty confident that that will be resolved by, should be by the end of the week, but certainly by next week. So I was gonna request that 
council approved this contingent on receiving the receipt of paid taxes and the title, which is a mortgagee's consent for the lender that's on there. We just said we're trying to dedicate this, which CW is confident we'll be able to have in the next couple days, but we don't have mm -hmm. at this point. We're good with that. That's fine with that. Yeah, we're fine with that. Road portion, yeah, right? when you have contingencies that are clear, we're mm -hmm. okay with that. And this is simple enough. Okay. In that case, I would move that we approve the final plat for pa pasture lane subdivision phase one, subject to the contingencies outlined by Mr. Buckner. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's uh, unanimous with Mr. Cox abstaining. Item number 11, request to reconsider staff interpretation of a master plan road improvement in the Diamante yes. subdivision phase two. Yes, from Kirby Stratton. I huh. called it manager, I guess. Thank you. Yeah, he's asking to reconsider about paying for the improvement to the road, but we don't necessarily know where, where it's going to be or when it's going to be put in. Mm-hmm. I, I was at um, sketch review last Thursday where you've already started the process, right, for the... Yeah, well, Bob was there, yes, yeah. Well, he started the, the motion. I, I still struggle with this. I, I recognize, and I'm the one that brought up last week, that our master plan roads don't necessarily, they are lines on maps. But I, I do think that um, we, ought to s we ought to stand by what the staff is recommending and then proceed then if you want to try and go through the deferral process or something else I I think we should stick with staff's recommendation which process was started not the deferral process it was the changing of the master plan road process correct yes it was to move it further to the south just move it 50 feet or whatever or it would make foot. sense to move it down to split the purchase property and they have plans on both sides mm -hmm. right You may end up having a couple different alternatives come to you. Uh, Bob mm -hmm. Flat provided us with a more creative yeah. uh, proposal as well. So you may end up with more than one coming back mm -hmm. to you, but that process has started. Now, where are you on on this process? Is is this the last item you need to take care of before you can bring this through for final plat? Right now, yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. in terms of getting the construction drawings approved, yes. Okay. Well, what's the deferral pro? Deferral doesn't have to go through sketch. No. Does it go through planning commission? Mm, no. It will just come straight to us. Yes. <laughs> it, it, that's what it has. It probably might be better to at least have that discussion there, but that's what we've done in the past is just come straight to you. Because I guess, you know, the, the long as quick as possible. Right. The last that's, thing I want to do is hold them up. And that's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm wondering if, because I, I, I don't like holding stuff up, if, if we had on the you know on the next meeting a deferral agreement that's kind of subject to um the general plan change if you will you understand what i'm trying to get at well either way they move forward. that either yeah i want them to move forward but then if because because i do think there's a likelihood that you know there may be a general plan change here just because of the way that I mean, we don't want you to build a road to nowhere. Yeah. And that's what this is. Yes. Um, right now it is, yeah. Well, I think there's 100% a reason, for me at least, there's 100% support for at least a deferral. Right. Until the other two, so it's kind of a two-part thing. It's one, let's see where the master plan ends up. And even if it does stay there, or indeed does touch your property, we, I would still be in support of a deferral until the rest of it gets built. Why would we have them build a piece yeah. that has nothing on either side? Right, exactly. So I, I would, in, now this is, is this a residential subdivision? It's or industrial. It's in, industrial. It is industrial, yeah. okay. So uh, those are different considerations it's anyway when we're already, talking about deferrals. Is. So yeah, I would say let's, let's just put that on the next agenda for a deferral agreement with this final plat so that you can move forward while the general plan process works itself out. So with that, then, I would make a motion to not or deny the request to reconsider staff interpretation, correct? Because the reconsider, so yeah, I make a motion to 
uh, deny the request to reconsider the staff's interpretation of the master plan directive. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think that was unanimous. Jonathan mm -hmm. kind of rewrote it how it wanted to be more specific on what was the text. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. And let's, yeah, let's thank get back you, next week. We'll talk about it. And yeah, thank, thank you. We'll that way an you can move forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Item number 12. Consider so that'll the have to be on the agenda next week. <coughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have it on for next week. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Item Sorry, 12. To consider a deferral agreement for the improvements on 100 East Street and a variance to the engineering standard to allow a temporary driveway. I guess one question I have is we haven't even seen, I mean, we're asking for a deferral on a drawing for property that technically isn't even owned or, so it's kind of like. No, we, we own the property. But you don't own that new piece, you don't own the piece that currently, currently Cedar City owns the piece that we're actually deferring. Right. Well, so the, the issue is, as of today, if they put in the master plan improvements on the current road alignment, the for, they're going to build a very nice curb and gutter leading to the Forest Service parking lot. Correct. That we're just going to... Yeah. So I, I'm not saying I'm against the deferral. I just said, it's like, technically this isn't what we're deferring because this isn't even possible. If right. It, this isn't even possible as it sits because they don't own the land that makes that little y-shape piece that makes the little the splinter you know they they only own the straight piece but which is all. true so legal counsel how do you want the motion to move forward <laughs> well i mean the the alignment of 100 east is obviously in dispute but what we right. what's being asked of you is just deferring the improvements on 100 east Any regardless of okay. its alignment okay so the alignment portion is the why it's not a problem for what's been drafted and presented to you okay Correct. We just haven't done that yet. So that's what I'm saying. As it sits now, this is easy. <laughs> well, yeah. So. Still working on it. Well, I would move that we consider a deferral agreement for the improvements of 100 East and a variance for the engineering standards to allow a temporary driveway. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think that was unanimous. Uh, item number 13. Consider a variance to the engineering standards for a curb bulb out in the 775 North Street. Any changes on this since? No. Um, UDOT's only, only concern was to like make sure we get the handicap ramp back in place. Mm -hmm. Right. So. so question on that, if you could zoom in a little bit, Jonathan. So does that handicap ramp, it moves further to the south then, right? Yeah. It'll be installed be on their bulb out essentially it'll be installed right. Right in yeah right in that area yeah, somewhere right okay mm -hmm. and we we discussed this last week uh, i just want to clarify that there still is ample room then for a right hand turn and potentially someone coming in as well and a left hand turn it's both still yeah. three cars right right yeah okay and then what about how are we putting it in there somewhere that if Right. If, if the, the usage changed. ever changes, that the bulb out has to come out. Mm -hmm. What are we doing about that? We just have to make that part of the motion mm -hmm. that you make. But okay. whoever makes it, yeah, it's got to be part of the motion. But it's not a. It's not a. a gr I mean, what agreement? There's no written or signed agreement for this. <coughs> so it's in the, it'll be in the city council's minutes. Okay. So please make your motion very explicit <laughs> to state. <laughs> should the use of the building, mm -hmm. the old livestock building ever switch from a school to some other occupancy that the bulb out needs to be removed at the owner's expense within so i i will i will attempt this okay um so because we as a city um profess to believe in repurposing and preserving old buildings um and not as something that we want to make a habit or <laughs> otherwise create drop drop off lanes in the public streets, um, uh, I would move that we approve um, the variance to the engineering standards for a curb bulb out uh, in 775 North Street um, so long as the property is used as a school. If the use were to change 
the owner would need to uh, revert that uh, public street to the standard specifications at their, cost. At their expense. I will second that motion. We have. Yeah, would you like to? No, okay. just get it done. Okay. I have a motion to second. Just Sorry, I should even have discussion on it. Sorry, um, if, if I were to amend my motion to add within 180 days of the change of use. Sorry, Renan. I have a motion. Is that and a I would second amendment? that motion with the amendment. I have a motion and a second with the amendment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. I could make some jokes about the sheep shed, but I probably shouldn't. You know, that was also a roller skater in the west side. It was. Hmm. I was and a dance hall. Yep. I've been there. And a swap meet. When I danced, my <laughs> wife has left. Cons item number 14, consider an ordinance changing the zone from AT to R3M for a property near 3400 West South Mountain Drive. Nothing's changed here, correct? In accordance no. to the RDO? Yeah, and it's the number doesn't change on the number of dwelling units. So. Okay, with that, then I would make a motion to uh, consider the ordinance change, changing the zone from AT to R3M for a property near 3400 West South Mountain Drive. Second. I have a motion and a second, starting with Mr. Phillips. Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Item number 15, consider the revision of the 2023 and 2024 fiscal year budget. Fiscal year budget. I haven't made any changes to what I presented to you last week. Therefore, I would move that we approve the revisions presented for the 2023-24 fiscal year budget. Second. I have motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. It's a resolution. Revision is a resolution. Starting with Mr. Melling. Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Item number 16, consider bids for the Mud Springs production well. Sort of takes well, your breath away, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I just got to say one thing. In 23 years, I've never seen a bid this close. So I, I know. $4,000. <laughs> it's it's amazing. <laughs> Well, and unless I missed it somewhere, to see if you can get it again. there wasn't. A <laughs> unless I missed it, is there an actual recommendation from staff on which one of these two to go with? They're both licensed drillers. I, I have confidence in both. I haven't. I've never worked directly with Hydro Resources, but they seem like a really good company. We have worked with KP. They did the test well up at Greens Lake. Is the date um, the issue? I yeah. like the yeah, date the, better. Yeah, the date's the issue, really. So I'm saying for the extra $3,000, I'd rather get a two month head start. If we know the company and we're confident with the company, it would really be nice to get that hole drilled and do the work out there before we're in the middle of the winter. Right. Yeah. Well, not only that, yeah, but and monsoon season, I mean, yeah, they could end up not even getting trucks out there if we get. And we're certainly within the percentage because it's so close of making, selecting the higher bid over the other one. It's so tiny. Two months is pretty valuable. Yeah, and we have, flexibility in our purchasing policy to make that adjustment if uh, it's not just price it's a qualified bidder and it takes the whole the whole bid package mm -hmm. into consideration because so that is a pretty significant difference i uh, well, especially the word around like we don't they could say yeah september's around uh, could we look at the, the last budget part is around is the part the first part. yeah could we scroll down and just i have one quick question um just remind me again, the $2 million that we're talking about, this account, this was established when or where does this account? This was part of well, the was this part of previous administration or was this $2 yes, million yours? Yes, and mine. So. One of them, we have two wells, one of them that was the previous administration for $1.9 million and one that I put in the first year for $2 million. Mm -hmm. And I said I thought that was a ridiculous number. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. Well, little did um, you know. So if, since it's two million instead of one point nine million, this is it yours. must be mine. Okay. Yeah, it could have been either one. I, I one. chose this one. I don't. I'm not sure why. And again, <laughs> uh, you know, just it, I, I had someone asking me about this, um, not this particular bit, but these kinds of projects, and just saying why is the city spending so much money on water? It's it's because with Quichapaw, right, and the declining levels. 
my understanding is we haven't drilled a new, new municipal well in about 20 years. And we've lost redundancy in our system I, as far as a good production well that's tied into our system. Is that uh, yeah, so not quite 20 years, but yeah, it's been a, it's it's been been a long, long time. time. Yeah. We've had a lot, we're, we're operating on much lower population numbers for, and, and, and in our water master plan and everything else production is is the priority over storage hanson allen and loosh were very very specific with us just a few months ago that we may have storage capacity but we need wells very badly i believe this well is planned for a 24 inch starter casing a 20 inch yeah it's 20 it'll be 24 inch bore and 16 inch it'll and be 16 inch casing yeah. of, of any other attempt this is handle, probably one of our well short, over oh, 2,000 yeah. gallons of water a minute short short of drilling in quichpaw this is probably our safest bet for having good water good quality good volumes jonathan one last question i have on this we had, you'd mentioned this last week knock on wood i mean i would hate this but the final exit ramp would be if the pilot, you know, they'll drill the pilot hole. How much of that, what, I mean, what would the pilot hole cost us? Do you have any idea? Like how much would we lose on just the I, pilot hole if we had to? Um, good question. I don't, I don't know. I don't have the answer. I, That's okay. I don't I'm know off the top of my head. But, yeah, we, we do. We will have an exit there because we're going to take some uh, water quality samples from the pilot hole. Um, my guess is we're probably four or 500000 somewhere in that range, okay. which okay. which is kind of, the price for a test well basically you know basically so but at least it gives us an option to to stop if we see something that we don't like yeah so so if we decide you know if if, if we drill the pilot hole we get a sample and the sample sucks we can pull out at that point mm -hmm. yeah okay if you'll scroll up then back to the names i'm ready to make a motion or if somebody else is 1200 feet 1200 1,200 <coughs> feet. Long ways. Well, with that, I would like to make a motion that we accept the bid from Hydro Resources just due to the earlier date in the year. The earlier start date is my main reason that we accept the bid for the 1,647,780. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. I, item number 17, and thank you. We'll get that hooked on to the conservancy district and bring that water to our north system that's going to be a really good day we might even cut a ribbon there you go item number 17 consider don't cut a pipe <laughs> what? don't cut a pipe no 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 we always bury those consider bad. consider an ordinance amending <laughs> item number 17 consider an ordinance amending 23-9 residential short-term rentals <laughs> regarding hoa and ccnr restrictions uh, Mayor, I would like to first of all just um, thank Mr. Jett for uh, his diligence and uh, going through things as a planning commission member and looking at uh, our ordinances and looking for places that maybe need modifications or adjustments. Um, as you know, I don't, I currently don't agree with the one um, removal, but I do appreciate his efforts and I wanted to thank staff for quickly doing this turnaround for us and bringing something that we could look at and review and so um, yeah I just think this is the way it should work and this is the kind of things we should be talking about so I wanted to thank him for that I don't know if others have any discussion or anything that they would like to I just want to thank staff for separating the two items that was a request I had last week so we could talk about them separately if mm -hmm. we needed to I, I feel differently about you know may have one vote on one and different on the other so so. Uh, yeah the really. hoa and ccnr aspect was one that that was me who brought that up i right yeah, and that and one that, i'm in agreement with yeah so. and that one that one we just revised for daycares and um I, I i guess one thing i would like to comment kind of to go off of what we had talked about um last time i would like to revisit some of our other um licenses on the on the notification requirement um, where, um, so, and, and, and I don't know the best way to word this, so I'm going to lean on staff a little bit, right? Um, but if, if it's a business that's by appointment only, so you're going to have, you know, somebody coming in at a schedule, it's not like a retail shop, right? It's a, uh, so if it's, if it's a home-based business by appointment only, 
um, and you have no more than one employee um, or customer at a time, I don't think you should have to do the notice. And I know daycares are a little different, but I don't think daycare should have to do the notice, period. And that's just me. Well, and I think there's a line to draw with the notification in like a master plan or a general plan where it has a, a direct impact on people versus, right. hey, we're just letting people know what our private business is. Right. And to me, that's where I draw the line with notification. I Well, and maybe it's even a matter could, of... I don't know that we could really say, hey, this has a physical impact on them having one person come or go once or twice a day. Well, and then it becomes, it, is, a, so. it becomes a security issue, too. If you're Correct. sending everyone within, I mean, some people have more than 100 people within 300 feet of their house. And if they're saying, hey, this is a short-term rental, right. come rob when you don't see a car, Absolutely. you know, that's, that's well, concerning. I, maybe the other thing, too, to look at is on just as a general discussion, since that's kind of what we're having here is, Maybe it isn't 300 feet. It, maybe you do look at some of them and you say maybe we don't have them, or if we do in some cases, maybe it's 150 feet or maybe it's 100 feet. I, I don't know what the magic number is because, you know, um, 300 feet's a lot, and it's a lot of notifications depending on the, the businesses we're talking about. I don't, I don't think at any time you should be notifying more than your closest five neighbors, frankly. Well, you could even say you People can say across the street next to you. And properties. That's 50 to 100 feet. Yeah. Councilman Melling, you could even say adjacent property. It literally has to touch, you know, right. behind, two sides, or, I mean, I guess, maybe or one across. No, no, no notification. Well, that's fine. That's well, but that's a whole different discussion. I'm up, I'm so I just want to make sure clarification. So item 17, I did not read that as two separate. Well, it's, it's 17 it's on, and 18. It's on 17, 18. 17 yeah. and 18. Oh, I'm so yeah, sorry. Just, just the way, yeah, sorry. The software we have my to apologies. use likes to print out the whole section. Okay. So I was trying to save you from having to skim through 60 yeah. pages okay. to get to <coughs> two. I'm, I'm, my apologies. 17 is just yeah, the HOA just CCR one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And since I'm the one that brought it up, then I'll go ahead. I would like to um, amend the ordinance or make a motion to amend the ordinance 23-9Q. Uh, um, uh, in regards to residential short-term rentals regarding HOA and CCNR restrictions. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Oops, Aye. an ordinance. Hold on. Starting with Mr. Riddle. Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Item number 18, consider an ordinance amending 23-9Q residential short-term rentals removing neighborhood notification requirements. So we've had the discussion. I'll, Somebody I'll, make an ordinance. I'll make a motion that we um, amend the ordinance of 23-9Q regarding residential short-term rentals removing the, no the neighborhood notification requirements. Second. No. Go ahead. I have Go a motion and, second and a second. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, starting with Mr. Cox. Aye. Nay. Nay. Aye. Aye. That's three to two. Uh, Mayor, uh, that concludes our business on the action meeting. I would make a motion that we uh, adjourn this meeting and go our closed session to discuss your character, professional competency, or physical or mental health of an individual. Second. And that could include us. <laughs> Second. <laughs> we have a motion. Their, their, their confidence the and mental ability, we get to discuss that tonight? Sure. <laughs> It's a roll I call. have a motion, a second. All in favor, maybe we call the roll. It's, I think it's Mr. roll call. Roll call. Will call. Wilkie? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, Mr. Yeah. So I have a question, Chief. Do those those charts that you sent me, uh, I was going to print those out and I didn't. Do you have those? Are they going to be on the My heck. Low charge. Exactly. I'm going to go print. Just from our new thing. Well, what? That's for the closed session. And is there any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. And in, in the office, I wonder Jason. Why it's the filter that we're Why'd you just remove it? Yeah, exactly. That's the first thing you get. You can see the little truck down there going, where are you going? Yeah, exactly. My wife is preparing. Could you get a boogie and you don't ever get it? Just get times for me. You get to bring her out of here. You can call a flower. You can be the first one.
money. You just take my roll, I'll just leave. Oh, this is good though, because I don't all of them. I don't get no happy options anymore. I guess if you guys want to start, I can. Okay. 